Hello, I mentioned in the video that I previously uploaded um, that I wanted to talk about coming out and that I had begun the process of coming out to people in my life recently uh, who I've known for years who had no idea that I was trans. Um, and I wanted to kind of go into that a little bit deeper and talk about why I have decided to do that now, you know, nine years later uh, into my transition. Um, so a little bit of background, I started presenting more masculinely and, you know, with cutting my hair, wearing male, uh, male clothing. Um, as a young kid, you know, I was about nine years old, I think, when I started wearing my brother's clothes. And then by 11 years old, I had no girl's clothing left uh, in my wardrobe. I was 14 when I cut my hair. Uh, but even before then, when I had hair, you know, down past my chest, I was being perceived as male a lot of the time because I looked like a skater at the time. The long, straight hair was, you know, really indicative of the West 49 sort of uh, crowd, and I looked exactly like those kids, and so I was perceived as male quite often. Um, so coming out for me was not as big of a deal in terms of, like, I didn't really have to tell many people, because for the most part at school, people perceived me as male almost entirely, and I was at a new school, so nobody really knew me. I had one friend I had to tell, um, who had knew, known me, you know, since I was younger. And then I had another friend who had only recently met me and was also queer. And so it was very much like, yeah, this is my name pronouns now. And she was cool with it. And we're still friends to this day. Um, I told my parents, well, I told my mom who I asked to then tell the rest of my family. Um, but I did all, I did come out to my brother as well around that time. Uh, but other than that, my mom told my dad, my sister, and all of our extended family on my behalf because I didn't want to do it. I hate coming out. I don't like doing it. It makes me feel sick. Um, this is a secret that I held on to for so long. You know, I knew since I was a kid that I was trans because I saw someone on TV and I went, oh no, that's me. And not in an excited way. It was a, oh no, I can't be those people. I'm not one of those people. And so I hid it from people for a long time. And I thought, you know what? No one ever needs to know. And then it got to a point where it was like, okay, for me to live, people need to know so that they can use the right pronouns and name. Uh, and that was it. It wasn't a, like, I want to tell people because this is exciting news. It was, I need you to respect my name and pronouns and I need you to do it now. And I need you to and that's the only reason I'm telling you. Um, so if I had my way, I wouldn't have ever had to tell anybody and I would have just snapped my fingers and people would just use my name and pronouns and I would have never had to tell anybody. But obviously that's not how life works. And so I told, I came out to two friends, my mom, my brother, and then a few years later came out to somebody who I was dating who didn't previously know. Um, everybody else found out from someone else, was told by someone else f at my request, um, or inferred, came to their own conclusion based on my conversations with them or other people and they've overheard things or whatever. Um, and that's how people find out about me is they hear it from someone else or they hear it from me, but not in a way that's like, I am trans, hello, uh, I am coming out to you. It's more of like I mentioned testosterone or I mention you know, something that completely tips people off. And that's how I've always done it because I don't like coming out. Um, every time that I told somebody and actually like went like, I need to tell this person this piece of information afterward, I felt like I needed to throw up. And I felt like that for months afterward, anytime I saw the person, because I just felt like I have given you information that I never wanted anybody to know. And now you have that power, you have that secret and I didn't want you to know it, but I needed you to know it. Um, and that's how I've always felt, and so I've avoided it. And, you know, living as I do with my medical transition and, you know, my appearance and everything, like, people don't know. They, they wouldn't know. Um, 
unless someone told them, and so, yeah, I, it, for the past few years now, I've started to feel very lonely in terms of my transition. Um, I felt like, you know, I have, I have trans support, like I, I have trans friends and I have trans, you know, roles, volunteer roles and things like that. Like I'm involved in the trans community. And so it's not like that. Like I, I know people um, and I have spaces that I can talk about trans stuff with people. But there were aspects of my life, my job, my coworkers, my friends outside of the queer community who have no idea about my transition. Um, and I was starting to feel like after years of knowing these people that I knew so much about them and I felt like they knew very little about me um, because I was holding back all of this information. And I felt like, you know, we all do it. We edit our history so that we don't out ourselves. Um, you know, things like I wasn't personally in the Girl Scouts, but I hear people who were talk about this of like not being able to mention that they were in the Girl Scouts because obviously as a man saying, hey, I was in the Girl Scouts, like that's a complete red flag of like, oh, you're trans. Um, but like things like that of like, I didn't want to mention that I had dolls as a kid, like someone's talking about their dolls and I didn't want to be like, oh, I had that doll or, you know, um, just like stupid shit that, that, that you shouldn't have to edit, but I felt like I had to so that I wouldn't tip people off and but then also the big piece of I had phalloplasty I had two months off of work and then I got back and I was on reduced work for months afterward and I was in pain and I was struggling and I was sad and lonely and I wanted to be excited but people thought I was like seriously ill um because I wouldn't tell them what surgery I was having um which is, you know, that's fair. Like people were concerned about me. Um, and of course you're not assuming that someone's having an elective surgery that's that serious and that causes that much pain and that much um, debilitating kind of uh, healing. So, you know, it was that, that process of like going to work every day and people helping me, you know, with things like putting my coat on. Like my coworkers were helping me get my coat on and off. They were helping me, um, you know, understanding that obviously work accommodation and stuff like legally people have to accommodate, but like they were just being really lovely about it, but they had no idea what was going on with me. And, you know, that loneliness of not being able to just say like what was happening um, really drove home to me my desire to tell people about my history. Because prior to that, I thought, you know, it's an accepting workplace. Like, I, I don't feel like anybody's gonna be a jerk. I think that it'll be well received, but I just couldn't get over my fear. I couldn't get over the, um, the anxiety that I had about just like breaching the subject with people who had no idea. Um, I started being open slowly about being queer, started talking about um, my volunteer stuff but not being specific because um, I volunteer with the queer community and more specifically with the trans community, uh, but also just more generally the queer community. And I was bringing up like those kind of topics. I ended up doing a um, LGBT 101 training with my workplace, um, which was nice, but I again was being very vague about where I fall in the community. I did, I run some LGBT events um, and it just like all of these things that, that I've been trying to like plant the seeds, and like get the conversation started. Um, but I just couldn't, I couldn't say it and I, I, I couldn't get it out and I kept being nervous and scared about it. And I just, I couldn't do it, but I knew that I desperately wanted to. And I know, like I, I knew that it wasn't going to be a bad reaction, but I just still couldn't couldn't jump over that 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 hill of of feeling scared and knowing that like once it's out it's out um and and remembering that fear of like one or that that pain that i felt after i come out to people that that sick feeling and so anyway i decided to come out to somebody a superior at work who i'm very close with i've worked with for like four years and felt really connected to and knew that, that she would be an ally and someone positive that, that um, 
it just felt important to tell her first um, and kind of get her feedback and like see how she felt about it because how she felt about me coming out at work and being like not like her personal opinion about whether or not I should do it but more so like her opinion on or her kind of validation that this is something that's important that that could actually be helpful to other people that could benefit the workplace um, I'm not going to go into detail about where I work but but the the fact that I'm trans, my trans experience has brought so much value to the way I do my job and having to hide that fact is really taking its toll on me because, you know, there's just been times when I could have stepped forward and, and done something or said something or, um, you know, brought an insight to a situation that would have been helpful and I just couldn't out of fear of, of outing myself and I feel now that like I'm in a place, a good place emotionally that I want to be, I want to be that, that voice, I want to be that person in that space um, who, who isn't afraid to just be themselves and be open about it and, and hopefully benefit other people and, the, and my community. Um, so anyway, I wanted to come out to her, and I did. Uh, I tried over the phone. I, I called her because obviously COVID, we're not in, in the physical space. Uh, I called her, and, and uh, we were chatting, and I tried to get it out, and my chest closed, and I couldn't speak. Like, I literally all the air from my lungs was gone, and I couldn't, I couldn't speak. Um, I basically just said, like, I've been thinking about you know, being more open and honest with uh, my identity and, and bringing that into the workplace and being more upfront about what I do outside of work and what I like volunteer wise and, and how that benefits my performance and benefits my experience and what I bring to the table professionally. Um, and I was trying to get out like, I'm trans and it, my lungs just closed and I couldn't speak anymore. And she just said, you know, whatever, you feel is right is is what's right and nobody's forcing you and nobody will you know be mad if you don't do this and but she said you know i would be excited and honored to to help you with anything that you need and so that was reassuring and so i asked if we could do a video call the next week because it was friday this phone call uh, I said, can, you, can we do a video call next week and can we chat a little bit? And, and she said, sure. So we set up a meeting. And um, so we chatted on the Monday. I, I stressed about it all weekend and thought, oh, no, uh, you know, she wasn't expecting anything. I wasn't saying like, you know, I more just wanted to speak generally about things. Um, and uh, so, yeah, uh, she wasn't expecting me to come out at all. Uh, but basically it took me about an hour to get it out but I did um and it flowed naturally and like in that conversation like we were talking about other things first so it didn't make sense for me to like start the call and be like I'm trans um but we talked about other things first and then at about 50 minutes into the conversation it flowed naturally into me saying um I don't know exactly remember how I worded it but I basically just said you know I um I work with a lot of trans people and as a trans person myself I have this experience and I do these you know things and whatever and she made the exact face I was expecting she had the exact reaction like I, I literally for years I've pictured what what her reaction would be and it and spot on like she reacted exactly how I expected um, and then we talked for about half an hour 40 minutes more um, just about what that means and and where we can go from there and um, I'm excited and this was the first time in my entire life that I've come out to somebody and I didn't have the sinking nauseous feeling I for the first time in my life came out to somebody and felt a weight lifted off of my shoulders rather than a weight being added and I just feel so grateful and moved and proud of myself for how far I've come in these nine years because I always thought that I wanted to transition and then I could live my life and nobody would ever have to know 
And these past couple years, particularly since phalloplasty, I've realized for me personally what a lonely existence that would be to not be able to celebrate my history, to not be able to acknowledge my triumph, my success at life in general, my, my celebrating my being, my, you know, resiliency and my, my strengths that come from being a trans person, what this experience has gifted me as a person and how that is valuable and should be valued especially in the workplace, a place that I love, a place that I feel, already feel valued and feel um, productive and feel like I'm contributing to something. But I'm ready to walk into that building, to, those, to that space, and never, and never have to check myself at the door anymore. And telling this particular person about my history just felt so freeing and felt like so, like I've just, I don't cry a lot. Um, I just, it's a thing that doesn't really happen because um, of testosterone, but like I really feel, I felt teary a lot over these past few weeks since I came out to her because I just feel like I've come so far and all I feel is excitement for the future and just like, what does this mean now? Do I just get to exist as a person and be confident and be happy and be and and just be me, a thousand percent me? Because my whole life I've been, you know, the first chunk of it I was hiding and and being called by a name that didn't fit and pronouns that didn't fit, and then came out and then became hiding behind the pronouns and name that fit, but a body that didn't and trying to hide that body from everybody else and hide my history from everybody else and this and now my body feels like it fits i've had you know various surgeries and and medical intervention that have that have given me confidence and freedom to just feel okay with myself and my history and who i am and what i what i aspire to be professionally and i just I feel so proud that I can acknowledge that this feels like an asset to my life, like, that it feels like something that I have, I can be proud of. And I want people to know um, that this is a part of me. It's not all of me, but it certainly contributes. And the person that you see in front of you is a culmination of the past 24 years of my life. Um, the, 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 and the nine years that I've spent working on myself so intensely um, because of transitioning. And so since then, I actually came out in a job interview uh, to my supervisor and to other superior position people. Um, so I've come out now to four people within my workplace um, and again, in the interview, like I just, I was like, this is an asset. This is something I bring to the table. And this is something that, that you should also view as an asset. Um, and like, again, I didn't feel any nervousness. I didn't feel, well, I felt nervous and anxious, but I think that part of that was just, it's a job interview. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it was a promotion that I was I was interested in and wanted, and I and I felt like this was something relevant, and it felt like a good way for me to get this information out because to me, like I've been stressing for four almost five years about how to tell people at work, and this felt like a good opportunity for me to be like, hello. Also, this is work related, but also this is a piece of information you didn't know uh, that I want you to know, um, and so yeah, I just feel excited. I feel excited about where this, what this means for me. I feel happy. I feel again, a weight is off of my shoulders. And this is the first time that's ever happened because always it's been a weight being added. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'll keep y'all updated. 
obviously things are, you know, as they are. Um, so uh, work is very different because of COVID anyway. So it'll be a long time, I think, before I'll get to, you know, reap the benefits of this or, you know, experience different things from, from you know, coming out further and, and what that means for me professionally. But um, yeah, it's, it's an exciting thing that I felt really good about that's been a couple weeks now, a few weeks now. And I just feel, I just feel happy about it. And it's such a new thing for me. And it's a really big, like, growth that I recognize in myself. Um, yeah, I always thought that, you know, especially having bottom surgery was going to mean that I could fade into the background even further and never have to mention it to anybody again. But the opposite effect has happened with me in that I realized how, you know, lucky I am to have the life experience that I do, how much it's enriched my life and given me a more perspective. And it's taught me how resilient not only my body is, but also my mind, my my ability to handle things and um, experience the world from various perspectives. And it just, yeah, I'm just excited. Uh, my dog is sleeping and snoring and making noises. Um, but yeah, I hope this was interesting to you. If you have any questions, comments, I'd be happy to interact with you in the comments or make a video, depending on if you want me to talk about something more in depth. But yeah, this is something, this will be an ongoing process, I'm assuming, uh, but hopefully I'll be able to keep you all updated on how things go. But yeah, so far, so good. Um, but again, I mean, if you feel like you want to come out somewhere, either come out initially as trans or come out like I am, you know, years later and come out letting people know, hey, I am trans, I'm, I've already transitioned. Um, make sure you stay safe. Make sure you, you know, think about it. This is something I've been, this is a decision I've been sitting on for years. Uh, and I know for a fact that, like, the people I work with are fine. Um, that, that the people that I'm choosing to tell would not have horrible reactions. I've been testing the waters for years. Uh, so I'm, I'm not putting myself in danger in that way. Uh, so I just wanted to make that clear that I'm not just like out of the blue saying this to people and, and jeopardizing my career or anything. I, I understand the decisions that I've made and why I've made them. And, and I have a very good grasp on, on the responses that I will get. Uh, so this is not me telling you to, to go and to start coming out at work, uh, without, you know, thinking through uh, what that will mean for you personally, but for me, I think this is the right decision. So, yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you again soon. Have a good one.